All right, so we're going to start off this section with a little talk of the stochastics because going into next week, we are going to deal with them a lot, uh, trading the ES futures. And um, so I figured what a great time to actually do a review because we did have a, a question in the, the room this week about stochastics and how they're set up and different types of stochastics. So I figured it's a good time to just kind of go over it. And what I put on the chart here is, of course, the, the regular ES, um, the futures right now that we've been trading um, during the day. And underneath, I have uh, the stochastics for uh, what we call the fast stochastics, the slow stochastics, and the full stochastics. And I want to show you how I use these and why they're different, and why some of them, why it's called the fast stochastic versus the slow, and what's the full, and why do I use the full, and why is there a two, two you know, we're going to go over this right now. And we're going to get this out of the way, and we're going to actually probably record this for some education. So it's, I think it's important to go over this. I use this all the time. We don't go into the formula as much, um, but there is a really cool formula behind the stochastics. We really measures, uh, what it does is it compares the closing price to its previous closing prices and is able to plot that and you can actually see if the price is getting closer to the highs or to the lows of that trend. And, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have a script here writing about this. So these, a lot of these, uh, um, you know, descriptions are coming out of my own my own head, so I apologize if it, it gets a little confusing. But basically, when George Lane and that's the, the considered the founder of the stochastic oscillator, and he put this together, he started off with a formula, and that formula was interpreted into what we call the fast stochastics. The fast stochastics here uh, usually is defaulted as fourteen three, and that fourteen represents that look back period. How many periods you going back are you taking the data from? And the three, or the you know the percentage D, there's percentage K and percentage D. The percentage D is actually the three-day simple moving average of the K. So you know when you have that, so it smooths it smooths it down. That's the underlying uh, kind of uh, uh, what do you call that kind of brownish orange line. So this looks very very choppy. And what was interesting about this formula and what it did was it measured. Um, you know how the stock was closing uh, versus previous closes, and it kind of follows the momentum. Is it is it closing near the top of the range or near the the lower part of the range? And that's what was plotted on the stochastics. And we found out that the momentum here shifted, and it was really based on momentum. But the momentum shifted here before the price shifted, so it was a great forecaster for price change. Um, the way he developed as a divergence, and he'd actually only trade the D D signal, the D uh, percentage D line, which was the smoothing of the uh, percentage K line. So what happened over time is they came out with the slow stochastic. And the slow st slow stochastic took George Lane's formula, but added what he normally, uh, you know, he just traded off of the d percentage D. So what they did is they already took a smoothing, they, they took the moving average of the K, already added it into the slow sto stochastic. So that's why it becomes this, the uh, K percentage K is equal to the per percentage D of the fast. So per percentage K here on the slow is equal to percentage D on the fast. The fast is a smooth and they already had accepted that. And plus they give you, you know, then they also smooth it out a little with the, um, with the percentage D. And then the full stochastic is pretty much a um, an open open uh, formula where you can actually change the parameters, change the parameters here uh, from four, you know, the move back, the the, uh, the look back, the smoothing, uh, the moving averages, and how you know how the formula wants to be set up. So I've adjusted mine to uh, a smoothing average or a simple moving average of four. I just find that to be a little more. Uh, to more to my liking. Really, if you have 14 threes, fine. 14 four, 14 three is is all good. Well, what came about after testing and finding, wow, I like this. You know, I like the full stochastic uh, oscillator. I love the signals I'm getting on it, but it's still a little choppy for me. It's, it's it seems to be very choppy. Um, you get a lot of good signals, but you know, especially if you're trading the futures off of these, these signals could be. You know, you get a signal here, pops up a little, and continues to move lower. Get another signal, and you could trend it out. Where you can see there, there are some good signals there that really, you know, uh, point to a bigger move up. But you know, you still have to get through all these other fake signals, or not fake signals. So, I started doing some back testing, and I started just, you know, using the full stochastics. I put in my own parameters, and I, start, <clears throat> excuse me, I started to realize that as I got up into that 40 look back period. I would I would get the same signals I was getting on the uh, fast, but only on the big bigger moves. 
So I would get those rotations back and I could see, well, yeah, I'm, I'm lined up here, I'm lined up here. And each time I lined up and we have a, a, a both a faster, I, that's why I call this one the faster, I only look back 14 versus the slower, uh, the 40. When we have these rotating back down together, there's a higher probability of a bigger move and a better move and a, a definite move because it, do, it doesn't always set up. I mean, set up here, you can see the move. It, this one rotated back down, it got a little pop. This was actually a flag setup we discussed on the last video. So this is a type of setup we're going to be looking for going into next week. You know, this is one of the things I wanted to discuss. So this is also, I started noticing and studying these over years and years and looking at them, seeing things happen in the market over and over again and realizing, hey, this is, this is something that's it's kind of a tell. So this uh, dual stochastic flag setup is something I developed and, and um, you know, I try to, you know, keep everyone abreast of it during the day. It works great on, you know, sell side or buy side setups. You have bear flags and um, um, bull flags. And then we have other HPS type of um, playbook plays, which were coil stochastics, divergences. And, but basically, we're looking at the dual stochastic rotation. Just to explain why I put the 44 in there, I found that this was the best match with the 14-4 uh, to give us that rotation. Like I always say, there's two, two, uh, two planets come into the same orbit and they kind of cross in and it gives you the best opportunity. You know, Even here, you can see the market here kind of pulled back and grinded up here. Uh, we, we moved up over that. I don't want to mess this up here. You know, So we have these zones where we did get some nice uh, dual stochastic setups. And we got some nice moves off them. So that's the the concept of the, the uh, stochastics. And you know, to go into more detail on this, I could do another video talking about the formula. Um, you know, the formula behind it. But it's very easy if you go to like um, stockcharts.com or Investopedia or something like that. You can easily look up a little more history about the stochastics. And but that's a good overview of why there's you know so many. The, what's the fast? What's the slow? And why I use the full. Why well, I use dual stochastics and the patterns that go along with that. Now, the whole separate video I'm going to try to get out tonight is looking at these patterns that we want to trade going into next week. The, the, the key here in the stochastics or, you know, or trading the futures is really um, having the patience to get those good, good setups. Like, I, I would love to get these flag setups all the time. I'm very comfortable with those. You put in your bracket order, you get out. But how, you know, how then you could get a dual stochastic. You could go for these as long as the five minute is. When I get a dual stochastic setup with a five minute setup, I go for those. We're going to talk about those. I'm going to show those to you in another video. But that's that. What I wanted to talk about. Um, just short here. Hopefully, you enjoyed that little segment of uh, why there's different type of stochastics and what they mean and how I use them on the site. And there's a lot more that goes goes into it. There's tremendous amount of, uh, you know, we didn't talk about the divergences this time, we didn't talk about the signals that you get, the price divergence, the, uh, you know, the flatline stochastics, uh, the spreading of stochastics, all these little things that uh, kind of give us a roadmap of the market, all right, so we're going to go over that all next week, and I'm looking forward to it, so if you have any questions on this, just follow up with me, on, uh, and uh, I'll try to answer them t uh, for you, maybe even in the video if there are enough questions.